Hi, I'm John Penny. I'm uh, uh, one of the pilots on the Rare Bear Air Racing Team. You can see the Rare Bear in the background behind me here. We're here at Reno State Airport in the, uh, in the Bear Cave, as we call it. And um, we have the crew working on the airplane here uh, this weekend. We uh, intend to do some flight testing here in preparation for uh, some uh, exciting uh, opportunities we want to try to take for the Bear and get ready for Pylon Racing School and for the races this coming year. Well, we do have a racing family. Uh, I've been racing for uh, about 25 years, a little over 25 years. Our daughter Heather raced in the jet class for two years. And um, how we got started, I um, saw the Rare Bear uh, race uh, in 1981, 1983. I was working at Learfan. I got to know the crew. I got to know Lyle Shelton. He wanted a backup pilot. He knew I was flying F-4s in the guard. And about the same time, I was going to ask him if I could uh, help support the team maybe as a backup pilot. He asked me if I would come on and um, be his backup pilot. And as it turns out, circumstances dictated that uh, he wanted me to race in, in 1985. And that was the first year that I raced. Came out okay. We pulled off the race and we had uh, a plug had come loose. We had uh, went crop testing with pins oil oil for about the first half for about a half of a lap uh, during that heat. We pulled on up and uh, I set up for a, uh, a, a flame out, what we call a flame out or a, a, a dead engine approach to runway 26 out here at the airport. Put it down on the runway, everything turned out fine and the engine seized up uh, during landing roll. So we weren't able to race the rest of the week. I never met Builder. He passed away in 1978. I came to work for Learfan in 1979. Learfan was a very um, ambitious project, a forward looking, uh, all composite airframe, the first civilian uh, all graphite epoxy airframe in the, uh, in the turbo prop uh, corporate uh, transport world. And um, it was an exciting project, had a lot of innovations on it besides the airframe. We had a, uh, an advanced propulsion system with two uh, turboshaft engines driving one propeller. The airplane had outstanding performance. It had uh, the best uh, fuel specifics of any turboprop uh, up until that time. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of airplanes I've flown. You know, talk airliners, talk uh, light airplanes, talk um, warbird airplanes. Uh, I think probably when it boils down to one single favorite would be the Piper J3 Cub we have at home. You just kind of wear that airplane, you climb into it and fly with the door open, don't even need any instruments. Uh, you can feel the airplane, you feel its performance, its speed, and go flying down river beds looking for coyotes and stuff like that. It's a very relaxing thing to do. Probably the most exciting airplane I've flown in terms of performance would be the MiG-21. And. Um, Flying that airplane and flying this airplane and uh, the privilege I've had to fly a lot of different kinds of airplanes. Two of them in my flying career that I uh, always say whenever I climb into these airplanes I treat it as a first flight. And, uh, one is a MiG-21, the other one's a rear bear. We didn't have the Cub back then, but she, uh, she, every time she visits us now, uh, she loves getting in the Cub and flying it. And we've flown together, and I've turned to loose. She goes and flies a solo. She's a, a totally natural pilot. And she, uh, in the fourth grade, um, my wife and I were looking in our basement uh, at some of these little booklets that uh, in school she would get, you know, who's your favorite teacher? It's your favorite subject. What do you want to be when you grow up? And in the fourth grade, she said she wanted to be a fighter pilot. So she knew, knew early on where her career path was going to go. Well, every of these complex airplanes and the Warbirds and stuff like that, um, I don't get to fly them all the time. Now, Steve Hinton, he has a lot more opportunity to fly these Warbirds uh, on, a, on a more current basis. But every time I go to fly one of these airplanes, whether it be the Rare Bear or uh, flying in Paul Allen's Flying Heritage Collection, the airplanes up there, or flying uh, some of uh, Rod Lewis's airplanes down at his ranch. Uh, Rod Lewis, of course, is the owner of the Rare Bear. Um, I get my books out and I go through one or two days of, of self-study to look at the procedures, look at the um, uh, limitations for the airplane, its maneuvering uh, capabilities, its maneuvering, its handling qualities, and stuff like that. So I try to get myself educated, re-educated 
on an airplane that maybe I haven't flown in a year or flown in two years. So it's, um, there's not a single little mental checklist before I climb into the airplane, but I do focus on studying to know the systems and know the airplane before I go out to fly it. Uh, the makeup of the Rare Bear team this year, we have our crew chief, Dave Cornell, and of course the owner, Mr. Rod Lewis, who uh, we couldn't be doing any of this if it weren't for his uh, wisdom, his foresight, his, his fortitude in keeping this thing going. Um, we have, uh, 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 again, Dave Cornell is our crew chief. Uh, we have Albie Reddick, who is our team manager. And uh, then underneath those folks, there are, we have a whole number of mechanics. Don't, please don't ask me to go through all the names right now. But we have uh, specialists in all different areas of the engine, of airframe, of uh, special uh, support systems, of avionics and stuff like that. And these guys have been on the teams uh, for over 10 years now. And they're dedicated. They give away their time, volunteer time to come out here and prepare the airplane and uh, make it the best it can be. This airplane right now is in, in the best shape that it's ever been. Uh, since uh, it came out of a, a cornfield in Valparaiso, Indiana in 1968.